Uh, you were one of the most prominent figures of the Egyptian revolution which led to the downfall of Mubarak, the rising of the Muslim Brotherhood, the election of the new president uh, Mohamed Morsi, the military coup and finally the election of uh, President Assisi. How do you assess the outcome of the revolution? Which of its goals were achieved and how much better are the Egyptians doing today than they did under the Mubarak regime? Um, I think that it's, it's very hard to um, uh, assess the the impact of the revolution, given that we kind of went uh, in the wrong direction after, uh, right after, um, you know, the downfall of Mubarak, uh, we were hopeful to build a democratic state, uh, but the transition to democracy was very short-lived. Uh, it um, it failed on the short term. I I believe that um, it is very obviously like the state of. Um, uh, freedom, democracy in Egypt is, uh, deter has de de deteriorated even worse than um, pre the revolution time. Uh, having said though, I, um, I have this view that it's, um, it was kind of equally, like, it, like it's naive to think that the revolution succeeded right after the downfall of Mubarak and it's equally naive to think that it failed now. Um, there's, uh, there's still like a change in power dynamics. Um, whatever we have now is not sustainable. I think Egypt is inevitably going to move into a democratic direction. I, uh, I just hold this belief in uh, in me, and this this is not this is not just like a naively optimistic belief. It just at the end of the day, the world is becoming more of a uh, of an interdependent force, and and there's this global move towards like um, having. Uh, Compatible systems of governance. That's what I uh, what, what I would say. And uh, from that belief, I think, unfortunately, we we head now. We are in a wrong direction now. We will eventually self-correct, but we have wasted a lot of time and energy. And unfortunately, a lot of people died in the process. Uh, I can't go back to Egypt right now. Um, so it's not like I'm saying everything is great. Obviously, things right now are, are on a big downturn. Uh, but the amount of learnings that a lot of people, including those who are in power now, are, are you know, uh, are having is, is, is huge. And I think, uh, you know, we'll meet in like 10 years from now and look back and say that, oh, interesting, you know, these developments kept changing the, where Egypt is hitting. Uh, and I, you know, I, I'm a realist. I, I wouldn't even say I'm an optimistic person. I'm a realist. And I think uh, my realism tells me that things will definitely head in the right direction soon. You left an executive position at Google in 2011 to support the revolution in Egypt. Knowing the outcome, what would you do differently if you had the chance to travel back in time? No, I, I mean, I, all my decisions were based uh, to, the, to the knowledge I've had at the time and uh, in accordance to what I believe is my moral compass. Um, and, and given that, I, I wouldn't have done, you know, knowing what I know at the time, I wouldn't have done things differently. Um, but knowing what I know now, I would have done things differently. The thing is, like, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, the thing is, like, it's kind of a catch-22 situations. Like, if I didn't, if I didn't make those mistakes I've done in the past, I wouldn't have learned what I've learned now. Um, uh, you, you know, saying, having said that, I think the key, um, the key thing I would have made uh, would have been to uh, invest much more in uh, empathizing with my opponents, uh, much more effort in bringing people together. Uh, because I, I really think that the problem of Egypt is not that we have uh, evil people and good people. Um, I, that's, that's, that's not how I view the world. Like, and, and I don't like um, viewing the world with this lens. What I believe in is like Egypt is a failing system. It's extremely hard to fix and correct and it requires the efforts of everyone, by the way, including the army. Um, and um, I feel like there has been a lot of naivety uh, and a big part of it is like I, I was pretty young and, and, and I didn't really understand a lot about politics at the time. Uh, now I claim like at least I'm, I'm much more clear about the state of my naivety than I've, uh, I've used to be in the past. And uh, I do think that, as, as I mentioned in the earlier question, um, that 
things will get better, uh, mainly because there's a lot of lessons that we're reflecting on now and we're understanding. Uh, Egypt, uh, one of my friends, um, he was telling me like, Egypt is not going to change, man. I was like, what is Egypt? Egypt is me and you and, and many other Egyptians. And look at us, like in the past few years, we've, cha we've changed a lot. We changed a lot of our views, we've changed, uh, you know, how we, how we understand power. We, we, we even changed on a very personal level. So. Uh, um, I think that you know I'm I'm very hopeful about the future uh, in in a, in a realistic way that definitely the next generation is gonna have a better Egypt uh, than our generation. In the revolution, you used Facebook to organize the protests. In general, the Egyptian revolution and the broader Arabic Spring were sparked and organized substantially through the social media. Today, the same media are responsible for tampering with elections, spreading lies and misinformation. How do you see the value of the social media in today's politics? Yeah, I think uh, this, is a, this is a very interesting question. I always think a, a lot about this topic. I just social media is a tool and it would be used for good and bad. Um, and I guess um, what was happening uh, initially is that uh, the, the activists or the young people um, had a better understanding of how to use these tools than the governments and you know the, whomever who were clinging on power. Um, things have changed now, and, and that access is becoming more shared. Like and and these tools are could also be used for manipulation. Having said that, I think that um, the what happened in the U.S. elections, uh, what happened in Brexit, uh, created this big alarm. Um, within the social media companies. And uh, I also believe that, uh, I believe in humanity, and, and I believe that no matter how, um, how, you know, how much do we sometimes dip and, and fall for, you know, and digress rather than progress, uh, things eventually self-correct. Uh, what I'm worried about is that the pace of self-correction, because I think it just like increases the collateral damage. Uh, I'm hoping that, um, uh, governments and civil society, uh, in addition to employees of social media companies, uh, understand and as now as we understand and realize the power of these platforms, to create some sort of social responsibility, to penalize and uh, to penalize bad behavior and reward good behavior. Um, and I definitely think polarization and sensationalism is a bad behavior. Today you live in America, which currently is setting a new tone in international relationships, strengthening its own position, renegotiating contracts and leaving environmental and social bodies. How do you feel that you can develop your own ideas in this environment? Where do you see promising counter models? Uh, I understand what you're talking about. I, I, I still haven't felt any of that uh, in, in my day-to-day -day life. I, I live in California, I live in Silicon Valley. It's a pretty liberal place. Um, uh, there's a lot of progress being made. Um, I also think that um, Many of us uh, uh, believe that what we are experiencing now um, is just not something that is sustainable, that is not going to last for long. It's basically, uh, I like to think of it as a bug in the system. Uh, someone have managed to hack, uh, hack into uh, a political system that is outdated, that need to be patched, that need to be fixed. And I think that's actually one of the things I talked about in my talk, which is uh, the rapid change in technology is changing a lot of our lives and making a lot of these political, economical, and social systems outdated. And it, it's becoming more pressing uh, than ever to um, tackle that and patch our systems. Um, it is, I find it interesting that someone walks into a party, becomes uh, the, the nominee, and then win elections just like that without any political background. That's, that, that's a bug in the system. Um, and, uh, and I think that bug is, is pretty serious. Uh, and it will be tackled because, I, as I said, like, it's actually those dips that create progress. Like, I'm sure um, that the policymakers in the U.S. are thinking deeply about how to avoid such situations. Um, and um, I guess uh, until they, they make their moves, it's, it's, it's becoming a more of a responsibility for the citizens to vote and show you know, to voice their concern using the power that they have, the, the power of voting. Uh, so I'm, I'm very curious about uh, the elections, uh, the, you know, the midterm elections that are going to happen in November. Is any part of your current or future work uh, geared towards correcting this system or try to avoid the mistakes? 
uh, I would love to. I would love to be able to help in any way I can. I don't. Um, uh, I think that like we're living in a in a very interdependent work uh, world now, uh, where you know everybody's work like you know everybody's work reflects somehow on on how others, uh, um, especially like work that is successful. Uh, I do um, uh, hope that I contribute. Uh, as I said, like I like to be someone um, uh, that is always invested in in the game uh, um, of trying to decentralize power and to make to create the right checks and balances within any systems of governance that I uh, that I exist in. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm more focused on social media. I've actually uh, wrote a paper uh, last fall uh, about how to you know best tackle the problem or the issue of regulating social media and um, this has um, this research have actually been uh, heavily quoted and used by many politicians including uh, governor uh, uh, Warner uh, in the Congress um, so I mean I, I again at the end of the day you know I just I I do whatever I can do and, uh, and, and I don't really wait for results and I don't also, I think that we are, you know, we are, uh, we're all interconnected and there's a lot of cause and effect that goes on and, you know, my, my effort goes way beyond my own abilities uh, because we just basically build on each other, you know, you could inspire me to think about something and I go think about it and then I inspire others and that's how things work, so. Massively increasing national debts, increasing migration flows and aggravating environmental problems are challenges that today's generation is passing on unresolved to young people. Where do you see opportunities for future generations to find better solutions? Uh, I think, uh, uh, I actually think that we are in a much better state than uh, our ancestors. Uh, you know, if you look 100 years ago, uh, look at the numbers such as the rate of mortality, uh, children children mortality, uh, this from natural uh, uh, reasons, this for, from wars. All these numbers are showing clear progress. Uh, I don't think that um, it's binary that we pass the problem without solutions. We have actually been working on solutions. They sometimes are very effective and they you know, end the problem and then the problem becomes much less newsworthy so no one talks about it. Uh, like you know, all the you know the the advancement in the in the health industry uh, that helped cure a lot of diseases that used to kill millions of people in the past. Uh, look at the efforts of like Bill Gates, uh, Bill and Miranda Foundation uh, in in fighting malaria. Or uh, we also you know we talk. We, you, there are definitely like immigration problems, uh, there are refugee problems, but these are, are being tackled. They're not as efficient. Like I'm not saying the world is great, everything is good, but I'm also saying that acknowledging the progress is a corner step in trying to advance it. And if we just become pessimists and sit aside and it's like, oh, everything is collapsing, the world is, is becoming worse, it's gonna be the end of the world, um, this will, only bring us down and make us not believe in our ability to change the future. So I take your question and say, I don't think it's just like we're passing it to the next generation. I think they're, you know, our generation, I, I put myself in your same generation. We still have like 20, 30 years where we can tackle these problems. And I believe in humanity's ability to self-correct. Uh, so I'm, I'm very hopeful about that. Digitization with concepts such as a blockchain or intelligent machines could have the potential to use production profits completely differently mm -hmm. to improve the living conditions of many instead of maximizing the profits of a few. What are the chances that this will happen? What conditions have to be created? I guess the conditions are being created now. There's, it's no coincidence that cryptocurrencies appeared in 2010 and not in 1990 or 1950. Um, the um, the information evolution or revolution, whatever you want to call it, uh, that was introduced by the internet helped decentralize access to knowledge and wealth. Um, if if you try and look at like patterns, like wealth generally is very linked to exclusive knowledge. And the more you democratize access to knowledge, the more you democratize creation of knowledge, uh, the more you are going to see decentralization of power. Uh, we are living in an era where the power of the people is becoming greater than the people in power. Look at like 
how much power uh, 500 years ago uh, uh, you know, leaders held on uh, power and leverage on their people and compare that to today. To today and you will see a pattern of decentralization that is hard to not spot. Um, having said that, I think that the more we distribute power and information, the more likely we're going to see um, uh, phenomena like crypto, and, and I'm not necessarily saying cryptocurrencies uh, or blockchain technologies are going to thrive and become the next, you know, the Web 3.0. I, I tend to think that this will be the case, um, but um, but in a bigger picture, like I, I just think that uh, a trend uh, that will continue to grow is decentralization. We're going to see more and more self-governing societies uh, because as as the knowledge of individuals rise, their ability to self-manage increases. Um, and the gap between those who have power and those who don't uh, is shrinking. So um, um, again, like I do, I do think that this will, not, this will introduce a whole set of challenges for humanity. Uh, like for example, the fake news phenomena or what you know, people talk about is like now as we have allowed creation of content and, and provided these like machine learning uh, um, algorithms that distribute content uh, in, in at a scale that is much stronger than any publisher like 50 years ago uh, what does that mean like it could be used by some like foreign uh, countries um, uh, to you know for their political agendas within other countries like you know the whole thing about Russia and the US Russia interven intervention in the US elections and and that's without a single bullet right like it's it's not it's it's an information war rather than an actual physical war um, but these problems are again will be have to be dealt with the uh, and that's why I just think that to me like decentralization decentralization is inevitable um, and uh, if you want to invest uh, in the future, or if you want to have a bit in the future, if I ha have a bit in the future, I would have a bit on decentralization. Uh, you're grown to two wishes. Which are they? I wish the best for the Egyptian people, and I wish to be able to contribute to that. Like I uh, also wish that I become part of the empowering more people by knowledge, uh, authentic information. Um, and, and take part of that. It's at the end of the day, as I say, like, uh, you know, I want to be an active player in, uh, in, in this uh, game of life um, in a positive way. And, uh, and for me, like, a positive way has to do with empowering people and getting them to realize their potential as humans. Well, thanks a lot for the interview. Thank you.